Continuing our farm system previews, we have the Minnesota Twins traded away AL batting champ Luis Arias, signed Carlos Correa. What does this mean for their middle infield prospects? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, the number one sports book in America. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. So Minnesota Twins, really interesting offseason, right? You trade batting champ Luis Arias to get Pablo Lopez and some pieces. I think it was a fantastic trade from the perspective of you go out and get a top prospect and uh, Jose Salas, you also get a flyer on an outfielder in Byron Churio when you trade away a defensively limited uh, single category contributor in Luis Arias, albeit very, very good in that single category. Again, held the AL batting title for batting average, but you go out and get Pablo Lopez, who you have multiple years of control of, and then you sign Carlos Correa after that whole saga finally ends. And so what does this mean for your top prospects? The number one guy that is eventually impacted by this, not right now because he's out with injury, but shortstop and center fielder, Royce Lewis. 2017 number one overall pick in the 2017 draft. Got in 12 games last year, mostly playing shortstop, but played center field in the game he got hurt in. 300, 317, 550. Two home runs, six extra base hits. One walk to five strikeouts and no stolen bases. Before that, he spent just over a month in AAA St. Paul. 34 games. 313, 405, 534. There's that 300, 400, 500 slash line we always talk about looking for. Had five home runs, 18 extra base hits, 14 walks to eight, I'm sorry, 18 walks to 32 strikeouts and 12 of 14 on stolen bases. Uh, 6 to 200, the thing to know about Royce Lewis is been injured a ton. Spoiler alert, he's going to be the guy who needs to stay healthy when we get later on in the show, uh, including two consecutive ACL tears in consecutive years in 21 and in 22. When he's healthy, so before this tear, the speed is 70 grade. Uh, the, the arm is above average, and he mostly played shortstop, but they started trying him out some other places. I think he would be above average at short. But you can move him to second or third. He'd be a plus defender. You could put him in center field. He would be above average. Or if you put him in left or right, he would be a plus defender in either corner. Question on the speed will be after a second consecutive ACL tear, where does the speed come back? Is it still 70 grade speed? Is it a 65? Is it a 60? What happens? So that'll be interesting to know. Now, offensively, up and down, had a fantastic 28 season, struggled in 2019, lost 2020, and then 2021 toward the ACL in spring training. Looked really good last year in the short sample size of AAA in the major league level. His max exit velo of 114 in major league baseball was the top 6%. And the big things that he did is he cleaned up the swing, kind of uh, minimize some of the extra pieces. He had like a big leg lift. It's now a little, it's now smaller and uh, kept his body in sync, upper half to lower half in the swing. And then pitch recognition. He got better on breaking pitches on the outer third of the plate. Used to be a weakness there. He wasn't able to stay on him or he would uh, spot him and chase him and they'd go out of the zone and he's just swinging and missing. And so got much better at that. Uh, and it, it's something where I think the hit tool is probably going to grade out as average. Uh, could potentially be a little bit better. The power is plus. Big question, obviously, is going to be where does he play when he comes back? Uh, you do have a lot of guys. You went out and you brought in Joey Gallo on a one-year deal for left field. Alex Kriloff is healthy again and back to first base now that you've traded Luis Arayez. 
You've got Polanco at second. You've got Jose Miranda at third. Obviously, Carlos Correa is your shortstop. And so if everybody's healthy, there's a question of where he plays. I mean, you went out and traded for Michael A. Taylor for outfield depth. If somebody gets injured, it's very easy to see him slotting in just about anywhere. He could take the place of any one of those outfielders. Obviously, Byron Buxton's had injury concerns before. Uh, He could play anywhere in the infield as far as second, third, shortstop, any of that stuff. So by the time he comes back, we're looking at, from what I've been told, we're looking at midseason, potentially. We'll probably have a little more clarity as to where he's going to play, Uh, and He's been a he's been a ranked prospect for a while. He was number one prospect in the system in 2018, 2019, 2020. He was still a top four prospect in 21 and 22, and now he's number one in 23. Just an incredibly long time to be a ranked prospect, but he's very good. And also, he's dealt with injuries and in lost seasons, and that has prevented him from debuting. He arguably may potentially have debuted in 2021 had he been healthy. Number two prospect in the system, shortstop Brooks Lee, uh, drafted in 2022, the first round out of Cal Poly, gotten 31 games between high A and double A, 303, 388, 451, four home runs, 10 extra base hits, 16 walks to 20 strikeouts, and 0 for 2 on stolen bases. Very safe draft pick because such of a high floor with the bat. He is a switch hitter. The left-hand swing, to me, is the better left-hand swing, but it's useful to have that right-hand swing in there. He can pull a little more with that right-hand swing, gets a little more power in it with that. The left-hand swing, like I said, I think is just a better swing. But I'd give him probably a 70 grade on the hitting, especially when he bats lefty. He has the fantastic barrel control and plate coverage. He can get to anything in the strike zone. And he's very good at view at seeing and recognizing the pitch coming in. Now, defensively and physically, he's already pretty maxed out. 6'2", 205. He's done a lot of the physical development he's going to do. And the speed is below average. The arm is above average. And so it's very easy to see him, because of the range at short, it's very easy to see him being a plus defender at third base. Again, because the arm is good, the instincts are good. I... If he can stay healthy, he's had injury concerns in in college. He had a back injury, a hamstring injury. If he can stay healthy, I see him as a guy who could stick in the dirt, can bat 300, and should be able to move rather quickly. I mean, he went to double A in his draft year. And granted, it was not a very large sample, but he did pretty well. And so I expect him probably to start back at double A this year and could be a candidate if everything goes amazingly late in the year for a cup of coffee, but more likely you're looking at a 2024 call-up. Number three prospect in the system, outfielder Emmanuel Rodriguez. 2019 IFA, 5'11", 200, and his stat line last year, 47 games in low A. 272, 491, 551. Nine home runs, 17 extra base hits, 80 walks to 108 strikeouts, and 11 to 16 on stolen bases. Knee injury in June, end of the season, had to have surgery. But holy cow, the season before, like the, the season he was having when he got hurt. So walk rate, 28.6%. On base percentage, 492. Best marks of anybody who was in full season baseball last year. So not the complex league, but full season A, high A, double A, triple A, who had at least 150 plate appearances. Best walk rate best on-base percentage. And it's a thing here. The Twins like to find these guys that have very good um, batting eyes, very good plate recognition, very good pitch awareness. Uh, And then he happens to have fantastic power as well. And so it's something where uh, he understands the strike zone very, very, very well. The issue that he has is... He's had multiple issues offensively that he's slowly getting resolved. Last year, he did a lot of work on hitting breaking balls. And like it was a weakness in 2021. You could fool him with spin. He fixed that. Now the thing is he needs to get better at handling changing of speeds. Fastball to to, to change up, things like that. We saw the swing and miss in 2022 in low A Fort Myers from velocity changes. 
for Manuel Rodriguez. But if he can fix this like he fixed the last thing, you're looking at a guy plus hit tool, plus power tool, who I think is going to be a very good corner outfielder. Plus arm, uh, average speed, defense would probably be... He's been playing center field, but I think that he's going to... At an average level, I think he'll end up as an above average defender in a corner. I can see him in right field, on base machine, could hit 25 home runs if everything comes out. Love Emmanuel Rodriguez, need him to be healthy. Number four prospect in the system, a guy that we talk about on this show a ton because we love this guy, Edward Julian, the Canadian prospect god of walks. 2019 18th rounder out of Auburn, you'll notice a trend that this system is good at finding guys in the back half of the draft. Got 113 games in in AA last year. 300, 441, 490, 17 home runs, 39 extra base hits, 98 walks to 125 strikeouts, and 19 to 26 on stolen bases. He played second base last year. He's not great defensively. He, like, he's a below average runner, probably 45 or so, and the defense is not even that high. The arm is average. I do think he'll end up being a first baseman. I just think that's probably the best place to put him defensively. Uh, I think he would do enough to be playable at the position. And like, okay, very, very good at working account, very, very good at getting on base. The power is above average. Honestly, and this might be a hot take to some people, Edward Julian, to me, feels like he has the potential to be a better version of Luis Arias. A guy who can contend for the batting title with amazing walk numbers and on base and more power ability than Arias had. Who can play passable enough defense at first base. I mean, to me, that's what Edward Julian feels like. I'm very excited to see. I'm guessing he will go to AAA this year and probably be one of the options who could get called up in that infield. In this case, if Alex Kirillov has has another recurrence of the wrist injuries, you can call up Edward Julian and let him play first base. And I feel very good that he would give you, uh, maybe a little bit of time, but he would give you what Luis Arias gave you with some more power. I might be the guy who's highest on Edward Julian, but like, trust me, I really feel like it's going to work out. In just a minute, I want to get to the state of the pitching. There's a lot of really interesting pitchers here and a lot of really interesting late round guys that they have found. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We are excited about this new sports betting partner for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in America. And the great thing about FanDuel is it is incredibly easy and straightforward and simple to use. The app is safe, secure, and then they have everything streamlined. This is the perfect time to check it out if you're new to it because this is obviously the week of the Super Bowl. If you download the FanDuel FanDuel app now, you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. You can bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. Just tons of different things you can do in there as far as the props. So like head-to-head props for the Super Bowl. Which quarterback will be sacked first, Jalen Hurts or Patrick Mahomes? Which quarterback will throw the first interception? Uh, What will Patrick Mahomes throw first, a touchdown or an interception? Same rule for Jalen Hurts. Uh, Will either quarterback have a reception in the game? total number of players that will have pass attempts. Like there's just tons of different fun little props, not just the QBs, but for everybody. You can look at, I mean, for the Super Bowl, you can combine players and see who will score first, who will win the coin toss. Will the opening kickoff be a touchback? Like there's just tons of different Super Bowl props that you can do on FanDuel. And the best part is, as soon as the game's over, you can get your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, so when we're looking at the state of the pitching in this system, 
they it's a very good job of finding promising players and a, a focus on we're taking spin high in the draft and then we're looking for sleepers in the back half of the draft. So Connor Prelip, uh, 2022 second rounder out of Alabama, 6'2", 210, left-hand pitcher, would have been probably the best, like number one college pitcher in the draft had he not gotten hurt. But he had Tommy John surgery in 2021. He was able to throw some bullpens before the draft. And he did not pitch in a competitive game in like after the draft, but he pitched in instructs. He threw an instructional league. So when he's healthy, the fastball sits low 90s, 92, 93, can touch 97. The slider is a 70 grade slider, tons of spin, like 3,000 RPMs of spin on the slider. Um, the changeup, above average pitch, sits in the low 80s. It's good against righties. He just didn't really have to use it a ton in college because the slider was so good and the fastball was good enough. And he's he looked a little rusty, especially spinning some of those pitches in those bullpens before the draft, but the velocity was there. And so he's on his way back. The thing with Connor Prelip is he's going to be a little more raw than your average college pitcher. In three years at Alabama, he threw a grand total of 28 innings. So he got four starts in 2020 as a true freshman. He was the opening day starter at Alabama. Pandemic ends the season. He started 2021, had a good start. Uh, through in two other games before being shut down, having the Tommy John, missed all of 2022. So he's going to be a bit raw, and it might take a little bit longer. Uh, I'm thinking he'll start off in high A Cedar Rapids, and I probably don't expect him to get to double A until the until the last like quarter of the year. Like high A, most of the year in high A, very end maybe double A simply because he's thrown so few innings that you're going to have to watch the workload and you're going to have to get the rust off. Uh, Next prospect that I love, one of those late round guys, and actually, more spoiler alerts for the superlatives, my sleeper this year, David Festa, 2021 13th rounder out of Seton Hall. Uh, Tall boy, 6'6", 185. Got in 21 games last year between low A and high A. 18 of those were starts. A little bit of of, of uh, workload management there. But 2.95 ERA in 103 and two-thirds innings, 108 strikeouts, so 9.4 per nine, 34 walks, 3 per nine, with six home runs allowed. So 100-plus innings only gave up six home runs. It's a power profile. It's a very good power profile. The fastball is a 70-grade fastball. Sits mid-90s, 94 to 96. Gets really good carry up in the zone. The changeup is a plus changeup in the mid-80s. A little bit firmer than a lot of fastballs that you see. The slider, it's above average. It's a power slider as well. Sits in the high 80s. So I do think he could benefit. Like he's got a lot of deception and funk in the delivery. I really do think he could benefit from some sort of slower... Loop, like, like a slow loopy curveball or something just to give a completely different visual profile to a batter from the current power stuff that he has now. And from what I understand, he's been working on some stuff over the winter. Really excited to see what he does in spring training. But again, uh, has improved a lot. And this is just another guy in the long line of late round pitchers that this organization has found. Uh, Bailey Ober was a 12th rounder in 2017. Josh Winder was a 7th rounder in 2018. Uh, The next guy, Louis Varland, 15th rounder in 2019 out of Concordia. Somebody else who has uh, good stuff. And uh, 6'1", 205, 24 games last year. 23 of those were starts. Um, He had one relief appearance in AA Wichita. And then he got into five games at the big league level. But in the minors... 306 ERA and 126 in the third innings, 146 strikeouts, so 10.4 per nine, to 42 walks, three walks per nine, with 
15 home runs allowed. So a little bit worse there than Festa. But the fastball, plus fastball, uh, sits 93-95, can touch 98, and a lot of that has been the physical development he's done since college. Uh, the the Going along with that, the slider, it's a sweepy slider. It's kind of average, but it gets good swing and miss in the zone. He's got a cutter that sits high 80s, kind of average, change up average to above average. But the cutter is really useful because he throws it for strike. So the slider is a chase pitch, uh, but the cutter, he lands for strikes. And the idea is if you're sitting cutter and you're trying to just read the spin, I'm sorry, if you're sitting slider and you're trying to read the spin, he can throw a cutter for a strike. So the thing is, he doesn't really have like a, a true pitch that is just a wipeout, uh, dominating swing and miss kind of thing. So he's getting by with four at least average pitches and plus control. But it's good enough. He had five uh, five games started in the bigs, 26 innings, had a 3-8-1 ERA, 21 strikeouts to six walks. So the strikeouts weren't quite there at the big league level yet, but the control, uh, the the uh, everything being at least average or better, absolutely lets him survive. You're looking at a back-of-the-rotation guy. I expect him to contend for a job in spring training. Uh, the last guy, one of the more confounding pitchers in this system, Ryan pitcher Simeon Woods Richardson. So 2018 second rounder out of high school, 6'5", 215, and was, has already been traded twice since the 2018 draft. So he was traded from the Mets to the Blue Jays, like the year he was drafted, uh, for Marcus Stroman. And then he was traded from the Blue Jays to the Twins in the Jose Barrios deal. And so, got in 23 games last year in the minors. 22 of those were starts. Also had a relief appearance in AA Wichita. But, 277 ERA in 107 and a third innings. 115 strikeouts, so 9.6 per 9. To 36 walks. 3 walks per 9. 6 home runs allowed. The thing here, nothing kind of blows you away, right? When he's on... And everything's consistent. The fastball is close to average, sits low 90s, 93, 94, can touch 96 with it. Changeup's above average. He's got a big uh, vertical breaking curveball that's average, and he has a slider in the low 80s that's close to average. The issue you have is the mechanics. So everything works when the delivery is on. He comes from like high over the top, and he's all, again, he's 6'3 as well. And so it presents a really unusual picture because it feels like not a lot of pitchers are like straight over the top like that. So everything kind of plays up a little bit. The issue is the consistency isn't always there. The mechanic, the, the mechanics are inconsistent. And when that happens, uh, he doesn't necessarily have the movement on some of these pitches and he doesn't have the control. Now, at the same time, that delivery gives him some deception, which helps the fastball play up. So it's really confounding as far as can you streamline the mechanics so that the control is more consistent without losing the deception on the fastball and the, the ability of some of these pitches to play differently from what a hitter is used to. A little bit of work there. He got in one game, five innings at the big league level, 3-6-0 ERA, three strikeouts, two walks. Uh, again, probably going to contend for a job in spring training. I see him as back of the rotation guy, might not kill him to go back to AAA St. Paul, see if he can work out some of this stuff mechanically. In just a minute, let's get to the superlatives, always the best part of every system, right here on Locked on MLB Prospects. And we are back. So, uh, given superlatives for these systems, we've already told you, we th I think the breakout player is David Festa. Uh, I love the ability of that fastball combining with the changeup, and if he can add in something slower like a curveball, I think it's going to do really well. We've already talked about Royce Lewis needing to stay healthy. Again, missed 2020 because of the pandemic. Tore his ACL in spring of 2021. And then tore it again in 2022. And the only game he played in the outfield. So, we've got that out of the way. But, the guy who your power tool is only as good as your hit tool. Right fielder Matt Walner. 2019 first round supplemental out of Southern Miss. 6'5", 220. He has the size you're looking for here. A giant arm to go with that. 70 grade arm, the above average speed. Uh, defense isn't necessarily great in the outfield, but it's good enough to play in a corner. 
And when he makes contact with the ball, it is absolutely stupid. 94 mile an hour average exit velo. Uh, He got 18 games at the big league level. I'm going to give you both stat lines real quick. 128 games in the minors between AA Wichita and AAA St. Paul. 277, 412, 542. 27 home runs, 63 extra base hits, 97 walks to 170 strikeouts in 128 games, 9 of 14 on stolen bases. In his brief cameo at the big leagues, 18 games, 228, 323, 386. Two home runs, five extra base hits. Six walks to 25 strikeouts, one one on stolen bases. I don't know how he's going to do in the bigs. Because, one, yes, he hits the ball incredibly hard. You heard the average exit below of 94. In MLB, out of all hitters that had at least 25 batted ball events, which is 565 players, he was 10th with a hard hit rate of 53%. So more than half the time, if he made contact, he was making hard contact. The same time, that strikeout rate, he struck out 170 times in 128 minor league games. And the issue is mechanical. So his, like, it's not the selectivity, it's not the pitch recognition or the the plate discipline. It's the actual swing itself. So... He has a a longer swing, takes a little bit longer to get into the zone. And then it is a significant, like, uppercut swing. And because of that, he misses on pitches in the zone. And then it's harder for him to check if he recognizes that this, the spin on this pitch is going to take it out of the zone. It's harder for him to check the swing. And it's just, like, this is the trade-off. He's going to be a well below average hitter from a batting average perspective. But if he plays for a full season, he could hit 35 home runs. This is just who Matt Wallner is. Your best stylistic comparison, not a comp, but just a stylistic comparison to what his game is like. Think about a guy like Jock Peterson, an outfielder who has a good arm, but's a little bit below average defensively is a streaky hitter, but is a slugger who has a ton of power and the batting average is pretty low. Like, that's who Matt Wallner could be. Uh, That's kind of the stylistic comparison. Uh, I love the power. The power is legitimate and real. 70 grade power, but the hit tool, like for as good as the power is, the hit tool is as bad as that because of the swing. And I don't know if you can change the swing and still keep the power. I think if you could have done that, they would have done that. And they were heartened because in AA Wichita, over 78 games, he batted 299 with a 436 on base and a 597 slugging. There's that 300, 400, 500 line we talk about. But AAA St. Paul over 50 games, 247, 376, 463. He's going to need time to adjust to the bigs, but he's just going to be a low batting average, high power guy. It kind of feels like that's what you have in Joey Gallo if Joey Gallo fixes his stuff and comes back this year. Uh, I think he's on a one-year deal. Matt Wallner may just be the heir apparent to Joey Gallo when Joey Gallo's done and perhaps moves on on a longer-term deal. I'm sure he hopes that. Uh, Matt Wallner might just slot right in in that same kind of role of a a high-power, lower-batting average slugger who plays decent defense in the outfield. Your best outfield defender, speaking of that, uh, outfielder Yasser Mercedes, 2021 IFA, Got in 41 games in the DSL. So, massive grain of, of, of massive grain of salt here with all of these incredibly small sample sizes at a level, not, not even in the country. But, 41 games, 355, 420, 555. Four home runs, 20 extra base hits, 18 walks to 35 strikeouts, and 30 to 35 on stolen bases. Uh Six foot 175, there's a chance as he continues to grow, he may end up uh, sizing out of the position. But I think if he can maintain the speed, which is plus, and maintain the athleticism, then he can be uh, uh, an above average to plus defender in center field. The arm's above average, so you like that. But again, as long as he can develop uh, in a good way and maintain the speed, I think you're okay. 
as far as his offensive game, the power is plus already. Like uh, he's you know plus runner plus power gives you a nice power speed threat. He does still have swing and miss issues. Thirty five strikeouts in forty one games compared to eighteen walks. So kind of like you expect from a lot of international free agents, this is a high risk, high reward. He will come stateside this year and participate in the complex league. He may get a little bit of time in low way afterwards. I'm not sure. But either way, I genuinely do not uh, do not expect to probably talk about him for a while because he is a high variance one way or the other. So that's kind of where you are right now with Yasser Mercedes. Fantastic week this week. Uh, we're, we're hitting the Detroit Tigers tomorrow who have still have questions as far as third base as well as some of the lost debut years of the top prospects in first baseman Spencer Torkelson and center fielder Riley Green. Delayed uh, starts of the season. Didn't go the way that they quite wanted. We're going to check in on them. If you have questions for Monday's mailbag, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Show's on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can also email us, LockedOnMLBProspects at gmail.com or drop your questions in the new Locked on MLB Prospects Discord. Link is in the episode description. Link is in the show notes. Until tomorrow's show, this is has been Locked on MLB Prospects. Oh.